Hi, this is Dr. Kelly Donahoe from Magnolia Psychological Services, and today I want to talk to you about thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and how that works for you, and how that might impact your patterns of being in this world. So a lot of us go around and we live our lives and we're not really thinking about how we operate on a deeper level. And that's one of the gifts that therapy can give you. But I thought to myself, why not share this information? And if you'd like to dig a little deeper, you can always find a therapist and see somebody. Or you can just take this information and apply it to your life and start thinking about things. So we all have thoughts, feelings, and behaviors but we operate them in different ways. Some people are thought first, some are behavior first, and others are feelings first. So I'd like you to take a second and think for yourself about an experience that you've had lately. It helps if it's sort of a heated experience or an argument or something that happened that you didn't really love the outcome. That would help us work through. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that recently you had an interaction with someone and it didn't go the way that you would like. So I'd like you to think about an example for yourself. Just take a second of a time in your life that happened recently. It doesn't have to be a huge deal, just something that you wish if you could pause and hit the replay button or go back in time and change it, that you would. So think of an example. I'll give you a second while I reorganize myself in my chair. Got an example. Okay. So keeping that in your mind, that event that happened, I'd like you to think next about in the moment what happened for you. And did you first have sort of thought about it? There was something cerebral or intellectual that happened in your mind and that was how you reacted to what we would call the stimulus. So in that event, something happened and that's the stimulus. That's how I'll refer to it from now on. That's how behaviorism or, or um, behaviorists would think of it. And so there you have the stimulus that occurs. Let's say that if I use a generic example, someone says something to you that gives you a reaction. That, them saying something, is the stimulus. So in that case, the stimulus could give you a thought. I don't really like that. That's a thought. Um, or I wonder why they said that. Or a behavior would be that you just react. Someone says something that you don't like and you react by bleh right? Saying something without thinking about it. That would be behavior as your first response. And then emotion would be that you have a feeling about what they said, right? Like, in fact, you probably, if feelings are first for you, likely don't even have words to describe the feeling. You have to sort of sort through the feeling first. So that's your primary way of reacting. Then the second, there would be a secondary and a third. So let's work through them. So I'd like you to think for a minute now, having your example in mind, of what your primary way of reacting is. Is it thinking, is it feeling, or behaving? I should have like a little sound. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so now you have your example and you have sort of your primary way that you react to things. But that's not, let's go a little deeper. So next you have your primary way of, of reacting to things. So after that primary way, so in my example, let's say it would be feeling. So I, somebody says something to me and then I have a feeling about it. My next thought is a thought. So for me, it's feeling and then thinking is the next thing. So I don't know what your secondary thing is, but you have your primary way of reacting. And now I'd like you to take a second and think and maybe even write down what your secondary way of thinking, what your, see, that's my way, what your secondary way of being is. So you have your primary way. And then your secondary way is, do you follow up that primary way with behavior, with a thought, or with an emotion? So now that you've thought about both the primary and secondary way, we're going to think about that last kind of thing, which for me is behavior. So I have a stimulus, an event happens, I get a feeling about it, I think about it, and then the behavior. Now let me say that for myself and the way that I am, there is a very close connection between my primary and secondary reactions and then sort of a gigantic gap often, often, unless things are dialed up to 10 for me, between that thinking and behavior. There's a 
there's a huge gap in there. Sometimes it's the kind of gap that's like, oh, I wish I would have said, or et cetera, right? So what your third way of responding might be, <clears throat> uh, I'd like you to think about that for a second. Again, with magic, do, do, do. So just thinking now about that third way for you. And then another layer is to think, like I was alluding to, of are there gaps in between your primary and secondary way, your secondary and third way? Is there a word for that? Third way? Third alary way? And so thinking about that, just being aware of how that is for you, is a great starting place. When you maybe hear the term CBT, it means cognitive behavioral therapy. And most therapists are integrative, meaning you take pieces from different aspects of theoretical orientations and you apply them to your work to give the best possible care to your patients. And so CBT would be what we just did a little bit, CBT light, 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 which would be thinking about how you think, feel, and react to things and looking at that pattern. Now, do we always do things the same way? Of course not. We are not computers. We are not robots. We are human beings. And even computers and robots are starting to sort of get that ability to change things up. So we react differently at times, but we do mostly have sort of a primary pattern of responding to things. And here's why that's important. Just being aware of the way you respond is huge in being able to manage those responses in a way that is most effective and helpful for your life and the kind of life that you want to live. And then through self-work and sometimes involving therapy, where therapy kind of happens, the work of therapy, one of the places can be creating space to make the reactions that you want to have between thinking and feeling, feeling and behaving, or however your operation works. But to be able to create some space in there to help you live your life the way that you'd really like to change those patterns up. So that's just a brief, brief bird's eye level cloud view of how we could look at some patterns in your life and how you could take that with you right now and start just noticing. So the first step is noticing what's going on, how you react to things. And then if you feel like you'd like to change up that pattern a little bit, start doing some of that work and you can do some of it on your own. You can talk to people around you, friends, partners, and you could also seek therapy. That's a great focus for some deep work to change the patterns in your life. I hope you have a great day and bye. Uh-oh, how do I pause it?